Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll see how to configure dynamic NAT with a lab demo. So this lab's following on from the previous one where we configured static NAT. When we did that, we configured a static NAT entry for our host on the inside at 10.0.1.10, and that was being NATed to the outside address of 203.0.113.3. This lab, we're going to configure another NAT rule to allow our PCs on the 10.0.2 subnet to get out to the internet. And those PCs don't accept incoming connections, so we don't need to configure a static rules for them. We can configure a dynamic NAT rule, which is going to give them public IP addresses on a first come, first served basis. So let's look at the existing configuration with the static NAT rule first. So I've got that configured on R1. So if I do a show run on here and scroll down, you'll see that I've already got NAT interfaces configured for that static NAT rule. So fast 0 slash 0, that's on the outside. It's got IP NAT outside on there and fast 1 slash 0, that is the interface facing the internal server, that is configured as IP NAT inside. Fast 2 slash 0, that is the interface which faces the PCs on the 10.0.2 subnet, so I need to configure that as IP NAT inside as well. You can have multiple interfaces configured as IP NAT inside or IP NAT outside, and whenever traffic goes between them, it's going to get NATed. You can also see a little bit further down there is that static NAT rule as well. So the first thing that I need to do is configure that interface facing the PCs for IP NAT inside. So I'll go to global configuration. It was interface fast 2 slash 0, and I'll say IP NAT inside. So that is the interface configured. The next thing that I need to do is configure my pool of addresses that the internal hosts can get NATed to, so the public IP address pool. The command for that is IP NAT pool. I'll call this flag box for this example, and the range of addresses is 203.0.113.4 going up to 203.0.113.14 at the top of the range and I say that the net mask is 255.255.255.240 that's the subnet mask on that public facing interface next thing I do is I configure an access list where I'll specify the range of IP addresses of the hosts on the inside that are going to get mapped to these public addresses so I'm just looking at them based on their source IP address, so I can use a standard access list here. So I'll use, sta I'll use access list 1 and permit, and the subnet the hosts are on is 10.0.2.0 with a wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255. So I've got my pool of addresses configured. I've got my access list specifying my inside hosts configured. The last thing that I need to do here is tie them together. And the way I do that is I say IP NAT inside source. And rather than being static for a static NAT entry, it is a list. And I say one to say that it is access list one and pool flag box. So that ties the access list and the pool together. And that is it now done. So that is my configuration done. All I need to do now really is check that it is working. So I'll do a debug here to watch it working. So I'll do a debug IP NAT. And I'll go on to my first PC, which is PC1. 
and ping the host on the outside. Let's just check what its IP address was. So I'm on 10.0.2.10 and I'm going to ping 203.0.113.20 on the outside and PC1 should be natted to the first address in the pool, which is going to be 203.0.113.4. So let's just verify that. So 203.0.113.20. So ping 203.0.113.20 and the ping works, so connectivity is good. And if I jump back onto R1, I can see my debug output there that was happening in real time. The source was 10.0.2.10 and it was natted to 203.0.113.4 as expected and the outside address 203.0.113.20. Let's put some lines in here so we can see a gap and I'll ping from PC2 as well. So ping 203.0.113.20 on the outside and then jump back onto R1 and you can see there's the source 10.0.2.11 has been natted to the next address in the pool which is 203.0.113.5 and the outside address 203.0.113.20. I can also do a show IP NAT translations. And if I've done this quick enough, I can see both entries in the NAT translation table as well. Okay, so that's how we can configure and verify dynamic NAT. If I wanted to clear these translations, the ones that you see in the table there, let's just ping again to make sure that it doesn't time out on its own. So I'll ping from PC1 and PC2, and I'll do an undebug all to get rid of the debug output, and I show IP NAT translations again. And if I wanted to clear these because I was doing troubleshooting, then I can do a clear IP NAT translation and then a star for all. And if I now do my show command again, I can see that they have been removed. I've just got the static entry is still in there now. The dynamic ones have been removed. Okay, so that was everything I needed to show you. One last thing, let's look at the statistics command as well. So show IP NAT statistics. And there you can see how many NAT hits we've got. So that's how many packets have been sent through our NAT rule. We verified everything's working, so we're all good, but a potential problem with this is that you've got a limited number of addresses in your pool and once you hit that limit then other hosts won't be able to get to the outside because they won't be natted to an IP address. So the way that we can expand that range is by using PAT, Port Address Translation. We'll cover that in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.